Hello there. Even though there isn't any practice or any uh, exercise questions in this unit, I thought it would be a good place for us to start talking because we're going to be fixing up our periodic table here. You're going to be going back to these two pages in your data book over and over again in this course and in any chemistry course that you ever take. And so we want to have this thing all nicely dialed in. And unfortunately, the current Alberta Education data book could be better. There's some information there that's very useful that they chose not to include, so we're going to get this thing tuned up. We're going to make a few additions. There's nothing incorrect that I'm aware of in this data book, but there are some places where there's blank space where there could be some useful numbers, so we're going to get those in for you. So, pretty much everything we're changing is going to be over here in the nonmetals, the things to the right to the staircase. Let's take a slightly closer look at that. Okay, so one thing that we want to add in as a reminder for you is that many of these elements are what we call polyatomic, meaning when you find them, you don't find them as single atoms, you find them as pairs or groups of four or groups of eight, that sort of thing. For example, let's go to red so these stand out nice. There are some elements that are diatomic that come two atoms at a time. Nitrogen is one of those and a lot of people put a 2 right there to remind themselves that if we say nitrogen you automatically write N2 not just N. You don't call this dinitrogen or anything like that, it's simply nitrogen. When you find nitrogen you find it as pairs of atoms linked together. Oxygen similarly is O2. Fluorine is F2. Chlorine is Cl2. Bromine is Br2 and iodine is I2. So all of those are called the diatomic elements. Astatine might be AT2, it's hard to say. This is so unstable that we haven't studied it very well, So, and you're very unlikely to ever see it, but these for sure, you want to know those are diatomic. Phosphorus comes in groups of four atoms in a pyramid shape. So phosphorus typically is P4, and sulfur is most often found in rings of eight atoms, so S8 is what we normally assume for sulfur. That'll take care of those. Uh, selenium is often SE8. If you want to put that in, I don't think you'll regret it, but we don't talk about selenium very much, so even if you didn't have this number, I think you would be all right. So those are the main polyatomic elements. Oh, except for one more. And sadly, this one is on the other page, so permit me to jump back for a second. So, we've taken care of nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, those were all twos, and then phosphorus, sulfur, and arguably selenium were polyatomics. The other one is in the top left corner. Hydrogen is normally H2. So. If you want to pencil that in to remind yourself, when you get to the final exam, you're going to get a blank data book, and unfortunately, you'll have to remember where these numbers go, but if you're in training and you're just getting used to it, I'd say write them in just to keep yourself doing things right. And most of these twos will be pretty ingrained by the time you get to the final anyway. So hydrogen and then this group over here are your diatomics phosphorus, sulfur, and selenium. And the other thing we want to attend to is the charges for ions. Uh, I'll just go black. That's fine. For all the metals, there's a nice listing of what ions they form. Nickel can be either plus, normally plus two, sometimes plus three. Zinc is always plus two. Cadmium is always plus two. Gold is usually plus three, and so on. But that information just stops cold when they get to the staircase, and I don't know why they chose to do that. So let's get those ion charges filled in. Now, good news, there's a pattern to these. And the pattern is, the noble gases don't really form ions, so you could think of them as zeros. You could say that the ion charge for each of these guys is zero. It isn't critical to put these in because we don't talk about the noble gases very much, but the pattern is this column is zero, and then it starts going one, two, three, as you go over to the from right to left. So fluorine's ions are minus one, chlorine's ions are minus one, 
rho means are minus one, same with iodine, and probably astatine if we could just get a hold of some to study. Oxide ions are minus two. Sulfur ions are minus two. Selenium ions are minus two. Tellurium ions are minus two. And polonium they already took care of, so no need to do that one. The next column is minus three. So nitrogen ions or nitride ions are minus three. Phosphorus is minus three. And arsenic is minus three. That's pretty much all you need to get on with this course. Boron typically does form plus three ions. You could put that one in if you want to. You don't see boron very often in this course. And carbon and silicon are a little bit weird. We don't usually talk about them having ions, honestly. But if you wanted to know what to put in there, if you would really like to have numbers in these blanks, then fair enough. The pattern actually goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, kind of. And then it goes 3 over here on the left, 2, 1, and then we're back to 0. We're back to a noble gas. But the funny thing about carbon is that it can be either plus 4 or minus 4. So if you put anything for the charge on carbon, this is a little bit of a fudge, but it really it works reasonably well. You could say that carbon and silicon can be plus four or minus four. If you want to leave that off, no problem. This is a bit of a cheat, but it actually will be valuable in some places when we get to the organic chemistry section. So in general, the pattern goes zero, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. For the two and the one, I'm talking about the first two columns of the table, these two columns. So zero, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, and then you're back to the noble gases and you're back to zero and it cycles like that. So if you have all those numbers written in, you should have a happy data book that will serve you well for the next several lessons. And we'll see you when you get there.